Hello everybody, it is September 1st and it's fall. I know that the first day of fall isn't for a while, and I'm not really sure when this video is actually going to get posted, but right now it's September 1st and it feels like fall. I'm out in my garden and it is 66 degrees. It's actually pretty sunny at the moment, but it's been downcast and dreary all day. Can you hear that? That's the breeze. That's fall in the air. That's what fall sounds like, okay? <laughs> Some of the trees around here are already changing colors and my garden's dying back. This is my garden. These are my beautiful sunflowers and they're dying. And my ice cream bucket, peppers, it's, they're dying. And the marigolds are doing great because their marigolds always do great. And um, there, I think, yeah, that's like a reddish tomato. And then over there, there's more tomatoes and they're just all kind of dying back everything in the garden's dying it's so sad so i got a, a nice little harvest here today and fall is in the air i have pumpkins and gourds that are going to be ready to pick in the next couple of weeks but who knows everything might freeze and die sooner than later because we're going to be getting down into the 40s and real close to freezing so I thought that I needed to sew myself a pretty harvest dress. Some kind of dress where I could tromp around outside and feel like a woodland fairy or something and come pick my produce. Um, so let's do that. And then it was time to go into the basement. Now originally I had planned to film myself coming down the stairs because I thought it would look pretty neat, but that would have required me to put my camera down at the bottom of the stairs, go back up the stairs, and then come down to do this. And that's a lot of work, so I decided to just have my little sister demonstrate for me. Now it is time to address the big issue at hand. What was on my nose during the first bit of this video? I don't know. I think I must have scraped my nose in my sleep like babies do. Apparently I need little baby booties for my hands. So yeah, that, that was important. And now it is time to explain to you why I had to come down to the basement. Well, it wasn't just to sit on this comfy couch, although it is comfy. No, I came down to the basement because that is where I moved my sewing things. It is now September 2nd. After going into the basement, I went to work. And then I worked for a few hours. Well, definitely more than a few hours. Went to bed, and then I woke up and I did a couple of things today. September 2nd, that is. And now we're going to make that dress. So here's the curtain we're going to be using. Oh wait, you can't really see that. That one, right there. It has a really nice scalloped edge, and it's sparkly, and it is see-through. Um, that's an issue, obviously, for a dress. But there's this beautiful shiny lining underneath, so we'll use that as well. And then I have an old sheet. We can use that for something. I don't have much of it left, but I have other old sheets. And then this zipper. And I'm probably going to need some other things, but... So I have discovered something. So I have discovered something. This curtain must have had a tear once upon a time ago. And let me see if I can do this with being in the frame. Nope, my head's gonna be chopped off. But it looks like, so it looks like there was a tear that went from about here to here. That's not a very big tear and you could definitely fix that real easy. You just sew up this side. But whoever was um, fixing this curtain had a different idea. Instead of fixing from here to here, they went ahead and they put in about one inch of seams here to here. I don't know if you can see that. Right there, there are some seams. So that way, when the curtain was being used, the two sides wouldn't come undone. There was still a tear from here to here. There was still a hole but it couldn't come undone. So my idea is that they either didn't have enough thread, although it is done by a sewing machine. They didn't have enough thread for a five inch hole. They only had enough thread for a one inch stitching space. And they needed to seal the hole and make it small enough so that their pet ferret couldn't get in between the layers of the curtain and sleep in it. I mean, that's the only logical thing I can think of. And quite frankly, I'm a little jealous. I wish I had thought of this. Um, 
I didn't, I don't, and I never have had a curtain with a tear in it. And I've never had only one inch worth of thread. And I also don't have a ferret. But if I did, this is it's a technique that I would definitely use because it's genius. So now I have both pieces of the fabric cut out, or basically I took the lining out from the outside of the curtain. And it does look like somebody had done some more TLC work on this. Um, I don't know if this was because of the ferret or if uh, I, I really don't know actually how the ferret comes into this at all. Maybe they didn't even have a ferret. They went ahead and they put darts in here. You can kind of see, and they must have ironed right about there. And they put two darts in. No idea why. We'll try and iron that out. So I went ahead and I figured out what I want to say with this dress. I was looking all over the internet at different dress designs and cute little cottagey prairie dresses and things like that. And none of them are really what I wanted. And none of them really seem to work with this material. Because it's, I mean, it is a thicker material, but it's also see-through. So it works more like an overlay. But I also don't have enough of that fabric over there to do a good underdress. At least not the way I was kind of wanting to with a full skirt. But then I got a great idea. So now I know what I'm going to do. So uh, just hang tight and watch what I'm doing because I don't know how to describe it. I just, I know what I'm doing but not really and words just, there aren't words. So I'm going to try and describe this next part. Basically I took the t-shirt that I had been wearing and threw on a sweatshirt so that I wasn't naked. And then I pinned the shirt onto my fabric. And I pinned it in such a way so that it can fold over the sleeves and cut around them. You really only have to do this for one sleeve though and then you'll see that I'm going to actually take out the pins for the sleeve that's on your left because I didn't end up needing it and then I basically just folded the fabric over and I cut it so now you're going to have an identical back and front but you're going to want a lower neckline on the front so you're just going to do that by cutting so again I folded the fabric in half that way both sides would be even or it would be symmetrical if you want to use fancy schmancy words and I just cut it just like that check this out guys I found an alien language on this bit of the fabric. Thankfully, I didn't cut it off. I mean, I got real close, but I have um, preserved this piece of science. I went ahead and I used the decorative part of the curtain to make basically a crop top overlay on this dress. I just cut it out the same way as I did for the dress and I made it a little wider on each of the sides because it is going to overlay and I don't want it to be too snug but unfortunately I did mess up just a little bit which happens especially when you're not using a pattern. Um, I made the underarm too wide. What I was trying to do was make a nice gradual curve in a sense but what I should have done is I should have gone like this and then out and over. I was trying to keep it extra wide on the sides, but I just didn't understand how I was actually doing it and how that was going to work in real life. I haven't even sewn it yet and I already know this was a mistake. So again, I should have gone to here and then gone out and down with this. So, whoops. You live, you learn, you make mistakes. Thankfully, there will still be enough coverage with this um, underdress or main part of the dress, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. It's just gonna hang more loosely than I was originally hoping for. And now it is on to the next step of our project, the very daunting part of this project, the part that we all dread, which is cleaning up from our last projects and other random things that have just built up. I have ribbon for the stays that I'm making. I'm currently sewing eyelets onto those, and then my serger is over here. That's some awesome fabric that I plan on doing something with. Eventually, I got it for $2 from Walmart. It's like three or four yards, and I got that whole bolt for $2, which is amazing. And then there's just random other things I've made, patterns, thread, my thread collection that I just will not throw out and just stuff. I found this thread which is going to work perfect with this dress. And of course I had to take a video of the bobbin being wound. I went ahead and I put the right sides together of the crop top. This is the front, this is the back. Went ahead and I just sewed up the shoulders and I sewed up the side seams. The bottom's already finished. The awesome part is I don't have to hem this because it has this beautiful scalloped edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably just roll hem the um, armpits 
and armholes, I suppose, and then the neck hole. I told you we were going to use that white sheet for something. So again, I haven't ironed yet. I'm not too concerned with this project. We can iron later. And basically I made two more crop tops, but they're going to be a lining crop top. And they are a little longer than that outer overlay crop top. Sorry, I'm saying crop top so often. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to sew up the necks and the armholes and that is right sides together mind you and i'm going to do that for the front and the back and then i will show you the next step and i flipped the dress inside out or the pieces of the dress rather and you can see that the armholes and the necks are completely sewn up and i just flipped them inside out and basically what i need to do now is i need to put one inside of the other and here's what that looks like more or less so these pieces here are the dress that's on the inside and then this piece and this piece are the dress that are on the outside so I just put it right in like you would a sock inside of another and here let me see if I get better into this it's very confusing if you've never done this before but the um, the more you do this the easier it is if you've never done anything like this before I have faith in you you can do it you're gonna be awesome and if you make a mistake seam rippers exist and it's fantastic so basically I shoved one into the other. We're going to want the um, the right sides together. So you'll see here I have my right side and here I have my right side. So I have my wrong side and my wrong side. And basically I'm going to even these out. I just have it out so you can see it. I'm going to sew. I want my linings together and my outer fabric together. The straps are now sewn up. That's how it looks. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to flip this inside out. It's making me think of a deer. You know, like a deer with its little white underbelly or something. So here we go. Basically, I could have done the lining all the way down to the floor, but I didn't have enough. So I just need to cover the armpit and neck areas, essentially, so that has um, a real nice look. A real hem wouldn't have looked good, I realized. So that's why I'm doing this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to see this is raw. And we kind of have this U shape or this wide V shape. I'm going to go ahead and take that on both sides. There's my other V shape. And I'm going to sew the white up to each other. And then we're going to sew the tip of the V together. And we're going to go all the way along to the end of the dress. And we're going to do that for both sides. I forgot to mention that. And now we have ourselves a dress with a fully lined bodice. That's the back. This was the front. If you don't have a hem on the bottom of your skirt or your main dress, you're going to want to hem that. Mine already had a hem, so I didn't have to worry about that. Yay, curtains for the win. Um, I am going to have to hem the bottom of the lining bodice. We are so close to completing this dress. And when I say we, I mean me, because is anybody actually following this tutorial? Probably not. And even if you're following the tutorial, you're not completing this dress. I'm completing this dress and you're completing whatever dress you're completing, but not this dress. Not exactly. Anyway, so there's the dress and there's the crop top overlay. I went ahead and I top stitched everything. You can see it's laying a lot more flatly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically put this dress inside of this one or put this one over this one, if that makes more sense to you. And I'm just going to throw in some stitches on the shoulders to keep it in place. I know it seems kind of crazy to have just cut our dress down the back, but I wanted to make this as simple to follow as possible. And we're also not using a pattern for this. So I felt like it was a lot easier just to do it this way. We'll basically stitch all the way like that. And then we'll just put our zipper in and then the dress will be complete. Yay. It is now September 7th and it is 59 degrees outside. And my feet are freezing because the grass is still full of dew. Anyway, we have our cute little cottage dress on, so let's go ahead and start picking some pumpkins. I'll pick that up. Alright, now we have our pumpkins. Bye, thanks for watching.
Just kidding. You know, these pumpkins just seem a little too fake for me, and this dress isn't giving me the feel I was really wanting to feel. You know, that cottage fairy walking through the forest with your barefoot feet picking pumpkins kind of feel. Um, I think we need a different dress. And a different dress? Well, that's what you're gonna get. Now this is more like it. First things first, I went ahead and I put this piece of fabric around my body and I made a mock-up, but I can't show you any other pictures except for this one because I wasn't wearing anything. And then I patterned that onto a piece of paper and added a seam allowance and boom, I had a pattern that I could use with this sheet. So I just put those pattern pieces on top of this sheet and I made two of each piece. And then I did that, and that was cringy, so I apologize. I went ahead and I made four strips about this long. I don't remember what I was saying in this video, but I was probably just saying something similar to this. And please zoom in and figure it out off of those rulers, because I don't know how big they were. I went ahead and I sewed them right sides together, and basically I made these little tubes. And then I used this chopstick to go ahead and flip those inside out. And my AC is turning on, and oh boy, this is going to be a loud voiceover. Sorry for all the background noise. Anyway, I sewed on the straps to the bodice, and it looks really cute. You can wear it in so many different ways, because those ties are versatile. Anyway, I went ahead and I basically made these little button waistbands. So I just sewed them the same way you would a waistband, and I did that on the left side and on the right side. I decided to do this off-centered though because I thought it would give it a cute, unique look. And then I decided to put on these buttons. They're all a little bit different and I thought it would give it a nice little rustic uh, cottagey look. And then I made my skirt and I just measured how long I wanted and then I measured my waist and I made this waistband that's about that many inches and my skirt was I think double the waistband so I gathered up that skirt which was double the amount of fabric and I sewed it right sides together with this super wide waistband um, you don't have to do as wide of a waistband and I went ahead and I folded it over and I hand sewed it and that's what the skirt looks like as you can see I was going for a look with a thick waistband so that's why it was so thick very nice flowy skirt. I love it. Very play suit vibes. Now because I didn't actually really explain how I made the um, this part, I don't know what you would call that, but this part here for the buttons, I'm going to explain it for the skirt because I'm going to do it the exact same way. So I have my edge here and what I did is there is that kind of doubled over thick layer on a sheet towards the top that looks nice you know they're about that thick that's what that is so I just left it sewing together what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my right sides together and I'm just gonna sew a line down um this is the wrong side but I just want to show you kind of so what I would do is I would sew it down here with about half an inch and then I will fold this over here and then on to the other side and then I have that little casing. It's gonna extend the skirt by about an inch, inch and a half. And then I can go ahead and apply my buttons and my buttonholes and it's gonna be thicker. And here we have the finished dress. But wait, we're, we don't have a pocket. We need to fix that. We're gonna fix that by doing a seven by five inch square. And boom, we have a pocket, a nice pocket that is actually big enough to put a cell phone in. It's amazing. Now, before we start a picking, I want to show you some of the cute little decorations in my garden. So I got this cute little birdhouse for $8 or $9 or $10. I don't remember, but I got it from a yard sale and they were handmade by this really nice gentleman. And basically he gets the um, little post from stair steps and then he attaches birdhouses and it's so cute. No birds live in there. I think it might be too tiny for most of the varieties around here. And then I got this little ladybug from a thrift store and he hangs on so perfectly. So he's on there and he kind of matches the ladybug on there. So that's cute. And then I have this wind chime from my grandparents. It's broken. Um, so the wind doesn't really do anything to it, but if you do that, you can get it to do something and make a little bit of noise. And then just cute little froggy wind chime from the Dollar Tree. And excuse that, I'm trying to show you my decorations. Anyway, and then there's my little bird wind chime. I'd really been wanting a nice wind chime that makes a good sound and I found this oops, at a thrift store. And yeah, I think that's all my decorations. First up, I have some gourds that I want to pick. So let's go ahead and pick it. 
see here. These leaves are in the way. I might have to cut them. That was easier than I thought it was gonna be. Plus, look how cute its top is. <gasps> Let's go put that in our basket. Oh, man, my basket's on the other side. Hold on. Okay, I've got my basket. One in. More to go. Here we have the prized possession of my garden. Looks like I don't have a neck. So here we have the prized possession of my garden. This big old pumpkin, which actually grew from last year's carving pumpkins because we just threw them in my garden as compost. But it's time to cut it. It is just occurred to me that these aren't big enough. So into the kitchen we went for a knife. This is taking forever. This pumpkin is so heavy. It's like the same weight as a newborn baby. And you know how heavy newborn babies are. Anyway, this is making me hungry. So let's get a little snack. Still some tomatoes living. All right. There it is. It's not the reddest, but I'm sure it'll be okay. It's sour. So cute. Hanging out with my new bestie, Mr. Spinner Gourd from VeggieTales. Hi. So I think in order to get a nice shot of this, this dead corn is going to have to go. We have a nice shot now. Yay, we do. Let's get it. Ah, there's a bug. Oh, these bugs are actually fine. I just wasn't expecting. Oh, there's a ton of bugs. They're like those squash. It's so funny. Hold on. I want to see if I can get a video of this. Go away, bugs. I'm just trying to film my pumpkin picking. And then you can literally eat all the decaying stuff that you want to eat. Please. I really like this tippy top of it, so I'm going to try and work out a way to cut it. So I want to keep it. There. See how it twists a little at the top? It's very cute. <gasps> There's a bug. There's a bug. Can you see that? There's a leaf in the way. Look at that bug. Okay, sorry squash bug, you have to go. <laughs> it touched me. Okay guys, I've got my basket of pumpkins. <sighs> that was a lot of work. Okay, so I got my basket of pumpkins. I have a pocket full of the last tomatoes and beans, and let me get a better angle for you. There we go. And I would say it was a success. This one is my absolute favorite. It's a ducky. Mwah. It's adorable. And then I've got my pumpkin, of course, and oh, I completely forgot. I thought I was done picking and filming after this clip, but I have some pumpkins on the side of the house that I forgot to pick. Let's go pick those. So we're just gonna bring these pumpkins to the side of the house so that we can go pick the other one.
Yep, you girls okay? Oh, hi. Hi. I just rolled my ankle. Uh-oh. Do you want me to come get you ice? No, it's okay. okay. I like your dress. Thank you.